Hello, it's the 21st of April 2020. This is Roberto Capovieci. And Barton here we have Barton Johnson from Texas. He left the guns home today. <laughs> I left the spaghetti home so we can uh, get started. Now, we've been working hard in this blockchain uh, that is UBC, which is a pretty cool uh, project uh, with a lot of interesting functionalities. One of these functionalities is uh, the distributed storage. So the blockchain takes snapshots of the current state of the blockchain and each node save the current snapshot. So all the nodes have that last snapshot. But then the snapshot is cut in slices and as it become old, nodes can eliminate part of these slides and keep only a redundant set along all the, all the nodes so that people can always rebuild mm -hmm. the snapshot. So we have a decentralized storage. We were thinking also in ways to implement decentralized applications. There are no smart contracts, but there are actually applications. So subset of nodes, they have a, a server running with a particular functionalities. They can run uh, uh, virtual machines, uh, actual virtual machine with the software, right? But this will give that subset of nodes the particular good functionalities a transaction can have a specific attachment for one particular application. The metadata upper part of the transaction with the big fee is managed like a normal transaction along the blockchain. The bottom part with a heavy load, which is saved in the centralized storage, is only processed by the node that have that application, mm -hmm. right? So in the moment that we were so annoyed by this, uh, F uh, public uh, social network uh, the censor people and F doesn't stay for the bad word this is for mm -hmm. the name <laughs> and we were thinking let's do a decentralized uh, social network uh, on uh, ZBC blockchain well we needed uh, first of all to start uh, with uh, a decentralized web server mm. which means uh, also the centralized DNS, uh, etc., etc. Okay, and this is not an application that run in a subset of node. I do believe that this is an application that should run in the full blockchain, because it has a very particular difference from an application that is a subset application. I said, okay, let's let's say that we have the centralized storage, and I can store an HTML page somewhere okay thanks to some uh, particular mechanics i know which is the small group of nodes that have the page uh, saved mm. because i don't know by the name or the hash or the automatically i know which are the nodes in the registry that have uh, this page so i can go uh, to their ip address uh, one of them and get uh, this page i can go to and make sure that the page is correct or is uh, mm. uh, broken up and uh, visualize it in my browser okay sure. So this is the basic concept and you have a, a sort of decentralized storage, but uh, it's actually open to everybody, but like the internet is open, so we can work out to this. If each node has uh, a PHP installed, uh, mm -hmm. you can even save a PHP page that elaborates some data, but it becomes, no, I, know, I know where you go, and I, and I agree with you, and I agree with you. And here is a small problem, uh, but uh, can be solved, but they need to be in a sandbox because PHP can also format your drive <laughs> if you code it properly. But you start having a more intelligent uh, sort of HTML page. Now you need to close them in a side uh, a website, a domain name. So what we need uh, is a decentralized DNS, which is a very simple solution in our mm -hmm. term. It's uh, just uh, an object uh, with uh, you know URL. Then every browser can uh, uh, install a small plugin that when you do dot .bcz in a domain, automatically it's go get it uh, through the blockchain and not mm -hmm. through the regular DNS. Even though in my dream, uh, we bought the tld.bcz. So we had the, the .bcz purchase in the normal DNS system, but every request that was to .bcz was automatically uh, fished from the blockchain. So we were tricking the DNS system in believing that they were normal IP addresses. Hmm. Now, 
coming to IP addresses, uh, I was thinking how you find the correct set of uh, files that belong to a website in a decentralized storage. Mm -hmm. The addresses should be like a sort of IPv6, uh, where, and in fact, in the, my dream, uh, we were buying a subset of IPv6 that would cover unlimited quantity because, you know, like you just take the last uh, three mm -hmm. blocks of the IPv6 and you have uh, a huge quantity of uh, potential website. So the, our DNS uh, will point to that. IPv6 IP addresses in the internet, uh, once you get to a particular subset, you are in a particular data center if you want, right? And our data center were the blockchain. So we were actually giving uh, pretend real IPv6 addresses to subset of the distributed storage of our blockchain. Mm. Okay. Now, with the classic mechanic of the algorithm that we use, we can uh, create a space, like a folder, a directory, a container, that is addressed specifically with one ending part of IPv6. Mm. Or oh, we can make IPv12 yeah. if you want, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Adding one more thing to our own uh, gateway to the blockchain mm. to make it look like normal. In this way, if uh, somebody is pulling an IPv12, <laughs> if you want, we know which is the folder cryptographically the match what file in the distributed storage are included in this specific uh, part, okay? And this was the next step. The domain name system decentralized as well, where people register it as uh, uh, an object, a blockchain object uh, with, uh, with a specific characteristic. So people query it and find the IPv6, find the folder the browser uh, plugin uh, search for the index.htm uh, or index.php or whatever it is uh, emulating uh, a web server mm -hmm. client side not uh, okay this for uh, html so you're gonna get an outcome it was easy limited things that you can do but uh, mm. but we can still elaborate because that's what was coming from my brain the uh, rendering is the client side, server side, the node the provider can do a minimum sort, uh, sort of elaboration. So there should be like an SQL light, uh, minimum uh, things, uh, PHP uh. interpreter. Now, my, my point was this, because uh, how you control the overload and things and where these things are managed. That's why I wanted to move uh, plugin, uh, browser plugin, or we can create our special browser even though it would be much better that people can navigate with Chrome uh, or uh, Safari or the regular ones. It's easier to download the full set, so you download the database, you download the, the PHP pages and elaborate everything locally for the result. Obviously you are giving away the full content of a potential website, so you cannot do things with username and passwords and things but uh, we can avoid them by going through digital signatures anyway. Mm. And uh, the subset of data can be encrypted if I want to make a website accessible by somebody specifically or by a subset of people. The plugin, uh, which we're already working on as a sort of wallet plugin, uh, take the full bunch of things, has the decryption key, and execute the website locally in my browser. So, you know, that's... So I have a few thoughts on this. Okay. And this, uh, a lot of them you've touched on a little bit, but I elaborate just for <clears throat> my sanity. Um, so when we're talking about hosting a, a complicated web application like uh, F-Star... <laughs> Sorry, a small parenthesis. The heavy file, like uh, embedded large picture and video, were coming from uh, storage, just centralized storage. Uh, so okay, we okay. only have the wireframe in there. So, most, even so, so we still have, uh, so we have a couple of different problems. One of them is static file storage, which you talked about, and I think we can support quite easily, which is this things like uh, your HTML files. Um, another one, uh, another kind of storage is this uh, more dynamic memory, so the things somebody would use like a SQL database for. Um, and that's a little bit of a, a trickiness. Um, is how you actually keep, uh, say, something like a SQL database in sync between any mm. different node that could be 
the server of a particular application. The other two resources we're trying to manage, uh, which you mentioned at least briefly, are uh, bandwidth. So maybe we have a node that can actually that actually stores this file, but that node isn't equipped to serve the file 100,000 times per minute for a popular site. And uh, a fourth one is compute. So like if you talk about a, like a PHP server, for example, um, maybe some of the jobs the PHP server has to do are actually quite computationally intensive processing streams of notifications okay. or processing things. So, so we have... So we have quite a stack of things that... Uh, and, and static files. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say like a... Files that change, okay. Yeah, yeah, so like dynamic or dynamic files. Or okay, database. dynamic file is good. Or database. Well, it can be many things. You can write on a piece of text, uh, so then uh, make files. And then we, we have bandwidth. Have, uh, so, bandwidth. So how you serve it? And uh, compute. Like uh, elaboration, that uh, calculation, computation, yeah, exactly. computation. You know, for example, if I upload a. Uh, if I upload a picture on Facebook, the very first thing Facebook does is to resize it. Um, you know, so, so if I upload a two megabytes photo, then it scales it down. Maybe after that, Facebook does some specific jobs and tries to look for faces it recognizes. There's several compute tasks that it, maybe it hashes the file and tries to compare it to a list of illegal files. Um, so these are each things that we would have to, uh, if, if we want people to be able to build anything beyond the level of, say, like a toy application, so we have to come up with some strategy for them to do in our system. Sure. Um, obviously, that was the first step. Uh, sure, you know, but uh, um, true, static files shouldn't be the issue, right? Uh, that one, we already, already have a kind of an idea for yeah, how to so do that's, it. So that uh, should be check uh, oh, <laughs> check Yeah. Dynamic files. Dynamic files, so that's uh, an actual problem. So. Mm -hmm. Um, probably, but then just talking yes. crap now and brainstorming. Yeah. As there is uh, the centralized storage, mm -hmm. the centralized computing, is that the centralized RAM? Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. every machine has a, a RAM drive uh, that become a collective uh, faster like swap memory? memory? I think the, to me, the, the difficulty there comes down to, say, we use blockchain in the first place because we're concerned about trust, right? Any person can join this network. Any person could wind up hosting a chunk of the thing. So it's about how do we guarantee like the, the right privileges to the First of all, to, to, the to deposit and save data, you go through a transaction. So sure. if I want to save an HTML file in uh, yeah, this device, I need to post a blockchain transaction with a fee the taxation on the file, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yeah. like anything else. So let's say, let's say let's let's say we're building ZooBook, for example. Now, every time I make a post on the page, is that going to be a transaction? Wait, exactly. That's that's why I'm saying. So, one step per time. You know, before uh, planning to climb the Everest, let's uh, you know the the same Set up here, a base exactly. <laughs> so, um, in the moment that people post, they need to pay for uh, internet uh, storage. So mm -hmm. pretty much uh, uh, that's nothing different than taking a server from one uh, of the provider where you save your website, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is solved. The fact that uh, one server needs to deliver one million time, I think uh, that should be a sort of caching system. Mm -hmm. um, where you query it from? Mm -hmm. But this is something, come on, any server in the internet provide an HTML file, it shouldn't be a big deal, even if he has to give it one million times, it's not a calculated request, it's just a, a delivery, I don't know, if, but uh, sure, can. It's, it might not be the largest problem until you hit like very, very high traffic uh, scale. Probably we can also calculate how many requests there are and uh, increase uh, the amount of nodes that can, hold the copy of the can file. Consider, for example, that for a... Uh, for a single page, a modern single page application, the uh, the actual uh, what you consider the static components of the page, so the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, that chunk can get to be pretty big. It can be a, co be a couple of megabytes because you have a whole okay. application, and that's without images or whatever oh. else, because you have a so, whole application coded that you're delivering to the browser in one shot. Either we need to work well on the decentralized storage mechanics, which means mm -hmm. that the request sent is just for an address, a file. 
how is delivered back to you is elaborated uh, separately meaning that uh, let's say i have uh, the domain send name send a request uh, i would like this file sent to this location and the network goes and does its job and eventually somebody sends a file exactly correct and that this is uh, made in such a way that uh, uh, load balance between all the nodes when something mm -hmm. is very high sure. load balance is distributed yeah. uh, so th there will be a protocol on file storage that will pretty much solve this thing a little mm -hmm. bit well as long as the network itself has bandwidth to support all the sites that when people are browsing on it uh, internet has it right internet has it whether there's enough ZubiC nodes that have it well, if there is a lot of demand, if these people somehow get a uh, reputation uh, score and get mm -hmm. uh, rewards for uh, yeah, serving the files... Uh, uh, it's something that's not thing. elaborated in the current proof of participation. No, obviously, the because this is new, so... But something we can think towards, exactly. So the money that people pay to store the file to be served, the decentralized, uh, go distributed on who serve the files? Is a mix half who store and mm -hmm. who serve the files, who store and serve the Potentially, files. Potentially, yeah. You know, you can or or maybe like any 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 internet story. Uh, if you take a server from somewhere, and at a certain point your website becomes super important, uh, mm -hmm. you need to pay more for data traffic. Yeah, potentially. You mean like uh, like put more fee on the blockchain? Like maybe there's mm -hmm. a certain number of times your application can serve a page. Oh, we, we run into challenges we have to solve to how we prevent the system from being abused, essentially. So, like, if you're selling yeah, a product and I want to take down your website, now I can just go and browse to your website 50 times and exhaust your credit on the blockchain. The, the plugin should cache it locally. Hmm. So uh, once but if I'm a hacker, I can force it to, to not uh, use the cache, right? I can spoof my IP address and get it. You did also servers in the internet anyway. Sure. <coughs> Oh. But let's say I, I sound I sound very negative, but it's no, only no, because no, 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 I want to. I want a very tight solution if we're gonna proceed. So with it's this. not really a check, but it's a shaky check. <laughs> shaky check. No, this was not even in the dynamic files. Ah, we're was, talking about uh, bandwidth. We're talking about bandwidth. Yeah. So anyway, it's like a problem to fight in the moment that uh, there's too much. There is uh, the, the the problem, but at the same time, is is to be considered how. Probably a centralized servers that do a proxy, mm -hmm. they validate that. Uh, Potentially can, yeah. So if somebody trusts the centralized server to sit in the middle. Well, it can be more than one. You can do being mm -hmm. uh, a different cost. If, different if it were one, then, and this almost comes full circle to the point yeah, of being obviously. stupid, but so like if, if I really care about serving my website, then I could pay for a centralized server that proxies the files from the no, it's different because uh, this gives full anonymity gives uh, impossibility from taking down uh, mm -hmm. it gives a lot of more uh, advantages yeah. even if they take down the centralized proxy there are another 10 set up around you yeah. know like uh, set up block flare <laughs> <laughs> now the dynamic files that's more uh, more important uh, and it's so, quite tricky, yeah. Uh, and if uh, we don't want to really compete with an actual web server, mm. then you can get the plugin to do the calculation. So it's client side. Yeah. You download the full database, you download the, the things. Uh, I, think, I think it's good. It's, it's quite a big chunk to bite. But you started with the example of the decentralized social network. And I think it's good to analyze what we want to do in those terms, else we fall short of the goal. No, but there's one step. Everything yeah. progresses, you know, like if you don't uh, succeed with the first step, you are demotivated in trying the second step, but... Uh, sure. um, Cause to me, that's the, the challenge that I run into about how to architect this thing is say, without making, cause the, the ideal here would be to have a certain degree of privacy along with, you know, whatever you're doing. So there's, a kind of a hybrid and this is what makes it a decentralized application rather than just a blockchain application is because it's not that every post you make and every picture can go in plain text on the blockchain because the scale doesn't work the privacy doesn't work things like that but there could be some way to piggyback a decentralized application off of the uh you know say say how you make it so that only the records relevant to a certain person are shown to a certain other people 
uh, which also which becomes a scalability solution in itself. In the moment that I don't have to see the posts from a million different people, but I have a feed where I know a couple of computers that I have to query, then that can actually serve as a scalability solution at the same time. They kind time. of remind me some friends of ours that had the silly idea of the human. Uh... Uh, yeah, yeah. Better we don't mention the name. <laughs> but uh, no, but in a certain way, you go to the point where. Then each person that participates need to run a node at this point. Mm. And you serve only people that look your own thing. Um, you post locally. This this is a thing, yeah, that I didn't quite like either. And it's yeah. it's complex because uh say when I had thought about this problem a few years ago, the way I pictured it was I think the idea that everybody who wants to use Facebook is gonna run a Facebook server is insane. It's never gonna happen. Um so Surely there has to be a middle layer more like a IRC where people can volunteer to run servers for the application and you can connect to a particular server that you use. And yeah, but this is already there. There is and this the social network that run exactly like this. Like diaspora. And I think that there is shit, mm. right? I'm not super familiar with it, but I should get more familiar. But uh, besides this full of <laughs> because uh, obviously when you have this zero thing, when you have zero uh uh, protocol for removing speech that's shit people now the, the the each server is maintained by his own uh, server mm -hmm. moderator that can uh, moderate and remove things but obviously it's one man against two yeah, one thousand the post crap and uh, it's crap this is why if you pay to post mm. Like, we go back to the idea that if you have to pay 25 cents every mail that you send that there wouldn't yeah, be some right. spam, right? Uh, in fact, uh, some core services, uh, email, uh, mail server, decentralized mail server, mm. uh, database, decentralized database. Uh, well, the blockchain, after all, is a decentralized database, but this is in a different it is. terms because I think you the, update data. Yeah, the biggest difference is in terms of like a right throughput, you know, uh, so. Right. But, um, so, you have. so you can use the blockchain to handle and manage uh, the processes on the decentralized database. Which potentially it depends. Like, uh, no, no, no. Say, say for example, how much of the appeal is of Facebook is that you can have a, a conversation with somebody back and forth, like in real time, and how how much of that if each comment has to wait for blocks? That's not too bad. No, but also because it's not too bad. Probably, it's more the scale of how many comments could you fit in a block <laughs> for the well, whole you system. You wouldn't feel comment in a block, I think. Well. Probably we need to remove from the central, the central at this point, place mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things and leave them on the client side. Mm -hmm. For example? For example, all the conversations or things that uh, are seen by two people and not... Uh, mm -hmm. So a chat goes browser to browser practically. Which I think isn't okay. I think that's the kind of thing that a lot of people would be into as we get more privacy minded. I mean... Uh. The, the one place central servers got popular in chat is that people show up on the expect to have their chat history, you know? And so if you get on a different device, you don't have your chat history. Yeah, you can save like your, your uh, encrypted uh, things in Google Drive and then they download it from there. Yeah, maybe if you want to. So each person keeps a local chat history, for example, and you do serverless chat. Mm. Or uh, you start distributing comments only to those that uh, need to see them. Yeah. Uh, people can even leverage their own Google Drive uh, as a storage mm -hmm. space for the... So you leave the wireframe in the, the centralized system and the content that you... You put outside. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the other... Uh, I mean, this, this takes us kind of full circle again, but the really simple solution to this problem, let's say I have a decentralized app that runs on the blockchain to manage certain important user actions like registrations and making new posts and buying credits whatever this is distributing right? the, the, the you, could, you could you could take the database itself and do a cloud hosted database that's administrated by a person um, it just kind of violates the ethos of you know and you could have each node connect to that database to check the state of reality it just kind of violates the uh, spirit of the, the blockchain decentralized I, I think that uh, the picture, either you see it or you don't see it, right? Mm -hmm. Once you know which is the ash of the picture, if what is served to you is wrong, you just don't you have the picture. Yeah. Okay. The result of a query is different. 
because you don't know the results of the query to compare the hash. So those things should be guaranteed by the blockchain. Hmm. And those things that are just uh, either there or not. Yeah. Yeah, so so basically that should be the limited set of... If I already know the hash, it's okay for it to go in any kind of whatever Correct, storage. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. Because then that storage can be replicated or for whatever. And like you said, worst case scenario, you don't get it. It's not hosted when you want it. Database. And that's, that comes back to the compute. Is the... Uh, yeah, so, so it is database of computation. Computation, you move as much as you can uh, client side again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you provide the information for which the result either are those or are not. Mm -hmm. Okay, query computation somebody else did. So there are depends on the application that you do because if we're talking about the centralized uh, social network, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, there are some particular computation. If there are if it's a dating site, there are different kinds of computation, but it all boils down to database queries, pretty much, mm -hmm. and uh, very little uh, analysis mm -hmm. of data. So I give I give an example of what I mean here related to a social mm -hmm. network. So uh, let's say a so you know your social network has a certain feed where it needs to that you check where you need to see a certain set of posts, right? Now you have a collection of friends, and each of these friends has a certain number of posts and each of those posts has a certain number of likes or reactions, a certain number of comments, each one has a certain age, each one maybe has some kind of uh, content tags criteria that it knows you're interested in or not. Something has to prepare for me based on this collection, the list of posts that I actually see. And that's a compute task to go through and scan these other pieces of information and arrange them somehow. That would be meaningful to me. I think so you where, will know where this compute happens. Client side. So for it to happen client side, all of that data has to be served to the client no. at first, right? After. Let's try to think something like uh, if you have. Uh, yeah, going back to the previous example, right? Uh, if you know what you want, you ask for what you want. Mm -hmm. Then it can be there or not, but you ask for what you want. So you have a container with all the information, mm -hmm. which are indexed in a particular way. So with the, even just a file name uh, where uh, each part, each character represents something, I don't know. Mm. So you can ask all the five that have a specific, the match a specific pattern. Uh, mm. Automatically, the build your uh, timeline or uh, your matches uh, to. Mm. I mm. think that data, if data is there, is uh, encrypted. Sure. And uh, the blockchain just distribute the encryption keys uh, to specific mm. files. This may be a reason that it has to be done client side for security in the first place. Ah. So I'm with you in the sense that say, for example, if I, if each of these posts with all these pieces of information is some kind of little encrypted blob that maybe doesn't have the full text or the full image or whatever, it's just some metadata about the post that it's going to use to try to organize them. Maybe my client has to download all these encrypted blobs because my client is the only one that has the decryption key to even make sense of these data to then sort them and present them to me a certain mm, time. Correct. But which are the blobs to download, you can pre-calculate by the fact that the file names have a particular set of... Uh, or, or even that they've... Uh, you know, you download the set of blobs that have been encrypted to your public key. No, because uh, no, because uh, they need to use the decryption key because there are multiple people that oh, can see the same access, piece yeah. of things. True. Yeah. So you are just given the decryption key that... Uh, mm. So you have access to the decryption key that uh, you are supposedly able to see. Mm. So if I write a comment and I share it with three people, then uh, these three people have uh, the they decryption key for the key. comment, which is delivered to them and encrypted with the private, with the public key. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, so it is a relationship, uh, client to client, browser to browser Cause directly. Cause when it comes to what is the material and what yeah. is the decryption. And of course, this is a problem you and I have discussed at length. But just for the the benefit of the camera, that's uh, obviously once. Once a thing has been decrypted and that person decides oh, to share it, it everywhere, oh, okay. there's nothing you can do. So it hardly matters whether the post content itself leaks or if the decryption key no, leaks. As soon as it goes out, it. Absolutely. the best we can do is to uh, 
rotate each new content with new decryption. Absolutely, keys yes. So yes. that you have, uh, so that it's it's not sufficient that somebody who shares this decryption key from the past now can see everything. everything. Now each piece is its own key. <laughs> yeah. Which you can get from the other guy that shared with you. So I have a piece of content. Want to yeah. share with somebody else? I send you the pointer to the content and the Correct, decryption yeah. key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this can is off chain, obviously. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah, I think a lot of this has to be off chain in order for it to be mm -hmm. uh, performant. This is the case of a social network. If it's a no, dating site or and I, I, I picked that example specifically because it's hard. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, in part because it forces us to think about all of these different aspects in detail. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to database, uh, or uh, it mm -hmm. should be just uh, the indexing part. I'll say like which post from which person. Yeah, exactly, to who, to what, so you can get, uh, mm -hmm. let's say you're offline. Yeah. It was something that can be shared with you. Mm -hmm. Somewhere must be written that you can pull for those things. So well, when you connect... Okay. Uh, so say, say for example, that we're, uh, that we're satisfied to run at the speed of uh, the blockchain, right? Like say like 15 second, 30 second mm -hmm. blocks, whatever it is. Um, Imagine that as I'm sitting here using this social network browser, each action that I do, so I make a post, I take a comment, I make a like, blah, blah, blah. Each of these actions uh, goes into a kind of a data structure. And at the end, I compute a Merkle root of these actions. And I post that Merkle root on the blockchain that summarizes all of the recent actions that I've taken on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Then somebody else trying to interpret, say, when they're served. Uh, and, and these can include... Uh, you know, hashes of files that I've uploaded or that I've declared exist on storage with decryption keys or, you know, may, maybe I don't give the decryption key, I give the hash of the decryption key or something like this, uh, or at least the hash of the content, I don't know. But, uh, so actually serving the decryption keys to other people can be something that happens uh, um, off chain, you know, like, so, yeah, so just peer to peer, you know, it's like uh, the peers understand which guy gets which decryption key and obviously, the peer itself should never have the decryption keys in plain. They should all be encrypted on one person's computer, on one person's client, for another person's client, passed through the peer, and yeah. then uh, are stored in the peer in that encrypted form, and then they can be queried by the other computer to get the decryption key. Um, so, so maybe that can start to serve as an index, like if I go Correct, back, exactly. so, so somewhere out here we have dynamic files or maybe even static files that are recorded of these sets of actions that can be larger. Yeah, correct. Um, the blockchain is used to prove that a particular person took a particular set of actions and to point to which files give the details of those actions. And then if I want to reconstruct okay. the feed, I can go and query for the specific static it's files just that are created. Cost the feed every time. Mm. It's 12 hours. True. But uh, I don't know how you get around that in the blockchain. Say, so consider we uh, say the reason that Facebook doesn't charge you a fee to use it is because they sell all of your data to advertisers. You know, they make so they can be data. an incentive, a reverse incentive uh, to people to earn uh, something mm -hmm. automatically pay off. Uh, sort of they can give. You can have a balance going up. Uh, so much you gave, yeah. so much you take, and, uh, and then you need to keep it uh, balanced out. Uh, Maybe, yeah. It's I mean, uh, obviously, if this thing goes on, there will be interest people to what to advertise, yeah. and I don't say the advertisement shouldn't be and there. You and know, of like, course, uh, you can, uh, you know, maybe you can, uh, the things cost a fee, but you can trickle coins to everybody in the, the ecosystem, you know. Mm. So, so the fee serves less like a, a, a cost that you have to pay, and it serves more like a rate limit. And related to content uh, because if there is a lot of free speech people can start posting disgusting stuff uh. yeah but uh, if uh, this uh, but really doesn't expose you to unknown people in principle only the people who you subscribe to you're exactly, going to see stuff correct. when somebody so, starts posting the cp or whatever you just love them exactly yeah. And it's better because at least uh, you are connected with people that you mean to be connected. And, and those files are only saved in encrypted form on some computers that, uh, say, everybody else has given up access to. Say, mm. they're encrypted by a key that's put up there and nobody has the key because nobody's subscribed. Yeah, correct. So then, what damage does it do? Correct. Yeah. It's a basic. It's a possibility, yeah. So, yeah, I think that uh, version 2 
this can be something that we can put the, just the, the just making an HTML file only. Uh -huh. They use images uh, from outside, mm -hmm. and uh, at the end, the system will be a success. To them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And of course, yeah. All this this brainstorming isn't part of our. And ultimately, for the ZBC version two, we'd like to generalize the solutions to these problems, Absolutely. so that we can imagine something like a social network or a dating site There's or several other type of applications but, that yeah. you could literally browse to with like the browser plugin or the special application. You feel like you're using a website, but it's actually running directly on the backbone of the blockchain. Correct. But if in version two, people has the ability to save an HTML file. Hmm. And people can visualize this general file in their browser mm. going through a, a start. domain that would be already fantastic. That's, yeah. Mm. So I guess we plan to add one per version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, no. I it's gonna. I think uh, at the beginning we can even come to compromises where part of things are done centralized, who cares, sure, yeah. you know, just and then slowly move. Well, in, in fact, I think that's one of the areas that we really should explore because this is a. Uh, to me, this is one of the areas where um, big, uh, where decentralized apps and uh, smart contracts have failed a little bit, which is that they, uh, so they do give you the power to build a decentralized application, but you're locked only into the set of tools and things that can be done purely on a decentralized network. And for some reasons, including scale, including privacy, including control of data, for some kinds of applications, that's not the only thing you need. So one of the big things that's missing, and I understand people are working to address it, but we haven't seen something we think is a kick-ass way to address mm -hmm. it yet, is uh, the proper way to bridge, to give somebody the ability to delineate the line between here's the decentralized part and what it guarantees, here's the centralized part that makes no guarantees, uh, here's what the communication, the bridge between these two parts is, and let a user make a decision on what apps they want to trust or use based on yeah, the decentralized part uh, contain a wireframe, the centralized yeah. part contain the content, but the content, if it's not the correct one, doesn't appear in the right. wireframe. Yeah. Uh, like the user in his side uh, has the key to decrypt uh, the decentralized... Yeah. Uh, in, in Ethereum, this concept is called like an oracle, I think. It's different. The oracle is different. just something that can be queried in order to right. have uh, an event action. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not so, even an event because they don't have events, so, but... Uh, so it's it's moving in the same direction, but it's a very limited form of what we're talking about. We'd really like to build hybrid applications. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. And not, not only hybrid applications that are partly computed on the blockchain and partly computed on the private server, but ideally also that are partly computed on the client. Exactly. The that's that's the key team. part, yeah. yes. And uh, all working with cryptography. Yeah, in, exactly. Uh, in a so it's a structure and application that knows which things to do on your client side, which things need to happen in the node, which things need to happen in private in the cloud. Think simply, from the blockchain, I get uh, the wireframe of the page uh, that tells this picture needs to match this hash. This yeah. picture needs to match this hash. And this is where you can get it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't match the hash, the uh, plugin doesn't. The browser show you understands exactly there is the wrong picture. picture. So. Uh, you remove any possible. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. On the other hand, the people know that you're watching the page because you're gonna get the content from a centralized source. You know, yeah, exactly. uh, you can even turn it off or a proxy through Tor or uh, you know, like uh, yeah, yeah. Probably the the centralized server should be in Tor, so mm -hmm. the plugin will get the content from Tor. So the only network. You know, yeah, of course. You at least obscure the IP addresses for the the requesters. Ah. Yeah, and uh, I. To me, I'm in favor of even leaving that layer up to the application developer themselves. Mm -hmm. I think uh, really the, the way I see it is that, uh, and this, this is kind of a software philosophy thing. I see a good software platform as something that gives you the tools to make the cool things you want to do easy and doesn't stand in your way to force you from doing the things it thinks you shouldn't. But at the same time, the, the people implement themselves are sometimes very that's, stupid. They're sometimes very <laughs> stupid, that's true. And that's the very Apple approach to it, is that you uh, like you uh, you make it impossible for somebody to, to do, do the thing stupid, stupid yeah. so that it doesn't negatively affect your brand. Cool. Um, but I, uh, I'm not sure if I'm convinced of that opinion. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of uh, faith in the wisdom of the crowd to pick the, uh, the couple of things. So let's... Let's make it possible for people to implement stupid stuff, but let's make it easy for people to identify which ones stupid, are the ones yeah. people understand or trustworthy or understand or done in a good way. And those ones are made by intelligent people who know how to make the best of the tools that we give them. That's my philosophy. Amazing. I think that 
That's first experiment. A little taste of our brains. Exactly.